Hi everybody, welcome to Intermediate Accounting 1. I'm Professor Martin. In our video today, we're going to be taking a look at completing a worksheet. If you have any friends or family that work in corporate or governmental accounting, I, I bet you may have heard them talk about period and closing and, and what a, a hard time and a struggle it can be sometimes to get the books closed at the end of the month. So one of the tools that accountants use to kind of help them in that process and help them close out the accounts and build the financial statements is called a worksheet. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Uh, we're going to use an example from your book, problem number 11 in chapter 3. We have Devlin Company, and they're getting ready to go through that uh, period end closing process at the end of the year. And you can see they have a worksheet in Excel right here. They've got the trial balance, they've got all the accounts, and they've got a blank column for adjustments, a blank column for the income statement, a blank column for attained earnings, and a blank column for a balance sheet. So guess what we're going to do? Yeah, you're right. We're going to fill in all those columns. And that, that's really what happens at the end of the period, whether we're talking about the end of the month or we're talking about at the end of the year. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to go through first step in completing a worksheet. We're going to make our adjusting entries. And then we'll kind of from there make our income statement, retained earnings statement, and balance sheet. And that worksheet's going to help us every step of the way. So here's what we're going to fill out. And I got this in Excel behind my little PowerPoint here. Uh, as you can see, it looks a little bit like what we just saw on the screen, only now we have a bunch of little green boxes that we're going to fill in because that's really what accounting is all about, right? Filling in boxes. So here we go. Get rid of that and unveil our problem. There it is. We've got the information on the right-hand side that we need to follow, and we have the worksheet on the left-hand side. So we're going to walk through the process of completing the worksheet right here. And I'm going to leave out a, a couple of parts. It, once it's in the problem to fill out the adjusting entries, I already started here, and the closing entries. I'm going to put those entries directly into the worksheet. Uh, just be aware that in your problems, you'll probably have to fill that part out too. And we may, depending on how time's looking, uh, have you fill in the income statement, retained earnings statement, and balance sheet on your own too. But I'll definitely tell you how to get to that point and make yourself ready for that. So here we go. Trial balance. First step, make sure that debits and credits equal on the trial balance. Well, we don't have to do a lot there because they've already done that for us. Trial balance is looking good, and we can move right into the adjustments. Every time we get to the end of the period, we have to look at the books and see if there are any accounts that need cleaned up. I remember in our discussions earlier, we talked about how every adjusting entry hits a balance sheet account and hits an income statement account, a permanent account, and a temporary account in every adjusting entry that we do. So we'll get right into them here. You can see in A, it says salaries accrued, but unpaid total 250. So right off in your head, you should be saying, okay, we got uh, salaries expense going on. So I'm gonna find that account right there. We'll plug in 250 and there's my payable down there. And you might notice these accounts right here and say, wait, wait a second, why aren't those up here with the others in the trial balance? Well, simply because those didn't have any balances in them. So we just have them kind of listed at the bottom here. And they'll have balances in them after we make our adjusting entries. And once again, your book tells you to make that adjusting entry down here. You know, I'll let you do that. I just want to get this worksheet filled out. Kind of going to make the assumption that you know how to make these entries and write them out longhand. So don't let me down if I make that assumption. B, the $80 heat and light bill for December has been uh, has not been recorded or paid. So we got the bill, but we didn't do anything with it. It's just sitting in a, a tray somewhere. So I'm going to put $80 to the debit side of heat and light expense right there. And we're going to find utilities payable. And we're going to put in a credit of $80 on that side. And again, notice I'm using these debit and credit columns here. Just as I, I would if I was posting them over from uh, a ledger account. Depreciation expenses totaled 810 on the buildings and equipment. No problem there. There's my depreciation expense. I'm going to debit 810. And I'm going to credit the accumulated 810. For D, interest accrued on the note payable, total 380. You'll notice on the trial balance we have a note payable. Interest is accruing on that. We have $380 that we need to pick up. Debit my expense account and I credit the payable. E, the company leases a portion of its floor space to another company for 50 bucks a month. The company has not yet paid rent for December. Man, they're only charging them 50 bucks a month and they still can't come up with rent. 
<laughs> so, uh, well, okay, well, we'll put a receivable up then. We are owed $50 in rent, and we've already earned that rent, so we'll record $50 in rent revenue. And record it even though we haven't gotten paid yet because we've earned it. On F, interest accrued on the note receivable totals $80. We also have a note going on, as you can see. Note receivable right there, $1,200. We got interest of $80 coming our way. And I got interest receivable, $80. Interest revenue, $80. So we're just moving right along here. We have one more. Bad debt is $70. We're going to record that. Notice we have an allowance for doubtful account. We have a bad debt expense, $70. And there's my credit to that Contra account, allowance for doubtful accounts. I always like to say that the Contra accounts are like the ex-wives or ex-husbands in the accounting world. They only serve to bring down another account. And that's the case right there. You can see allowance for doubtful accounts bringing down account receivable there if we net them together. Same with buildings and equipment and that accumulated depreciation. Ex-wives and ex-husbands of the accounting world. But they serve a very important purpose. All right, so the final little adjusting entry we have there, the income tax rate is going to be 30% on current income and is payable in the first quarter of 2017. Well, I don't know at this point what my profit is, so I can't really calculate the income tax rate just yet. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to kind of total up my adjustment columns to make sure we balance out, you know, just like we would do if we were doing a trial balance. Um, we just kind of add these up and normally I would just kind of do a sum function but the, the way the worksheet is you can see the all that orange is protected and it's kind of wonky I can't highlight up through this so we'll just add these up like that 1720 cross our fingers and pray to the accounting gods that the other side equals 1720 as well if they if it doesn't then we've boogered something up along the way yep there we go 1720 so my adjustment columns are in, in order here. And again, the problem that you have in your book, if you're working this problem uh, for a homework problem, you need to fill out the entries at the bottom. So we'll move over to the income statement and we'll try to figure out exactly how much of the income or loss we took in this particular period. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of start here with my trial balance, factor in any adjustments that were made and then come up with an ending number. So right here, we got sales revenue. I didn't make any adjustments. So I'm just gonna carry that over 25,140. We had a unadjusted balance in rent revenue of 550. We made a $50 credit adjustment. So I need to add that in. Notice I got a credit. I'm gonna add that credit and we'll have 600. And again, I would probably, if I were doing a worksheet in real life here, have formulas set up to kind of do the adding for me automatically. Um, you know, I would maybe have a formula here that would say that number plus that number minus anything that might be in the debit column. I don't know why there'd be anything in the debit column well, for revenue there, but I, I would have it set up to where it would make that calculation for me already. 9,015 cost of goods sold. We just carry that over. There's no adjustment. We have a debit balance in salaries expense of 2750. We're going to add to that our debit adjustment of 250 to get 3000. No adjustments in the delivery. We had an $80 adjustment right there for heat and light. We'll add that in. We got 540 right there for other expenses. No adjustments necessary. Continuing on down the line, we made a, an adjusting entry for depreciation. One for interest and one for interest revenue and bad debt expense. I don't have anything to net against those. There are zero balances. So basically whatever we made the adjustment for comes right over. And now you may look at that and say, well, wait a second. We had a $250 adjustment to salaries payable and utilities payable. How come you didn't put that in there? Well, remember those are balance sheet accounts. So those are gonna be reflected in the balance sheet part of our worksheet. They're not gonna go on the income statement. All accounts have a home and they only have one home. They're either an income statement account or balance sheet account. They're either a temporary account or a permanent account. So they can't be more than one thing at one time. So the income statement accounts go on the income statement, revenue, expenses, the assets, liability, and equity go on the balance sheet. So we'll once again, add up our little columns here. And break out the handy 
plus key on my keyboard. I get 15, 470. And do the other side. And calculate that. And you look at those numbers and say, oh no, I didn't offer a proper sacrifice to the accounting gods because I got down there and now the two sides don't balance. Well, that's okay now because we're looking at income statement accounts. What we're looking at represents our, the difference in these two numbers right there is going to represent our profit. If the debit side was more than the credit side, it would represent a loss. So basically, we got a profit going on right here. Now, we can hit adjustment number, or letter H right there. The income tax rate is going to be 30% of current income. So what I want to do, I'm going to make a little formula here. And I'm going to take that number which represents my income, credit side of the income statement. And I'm going to subtract out my expenses. And that's going to give me kind of a pre-tax income, revenue minus expenses. And then I'm going to multiply that by the tax rate, which is going to be 30%. And as you can see, I get 3,105. 3,105 is going to be my income tax. So I want to go over here and plug that in for income tax is payable. And I'm going to do the exact same thing right there. And then I will foot those two numbers just to make sure they balance once again. No big deal here. Yeah, there we go. So you'll notice now I'm on the net income line. So for the net income line, I'm simply going to kind of carry down my 25,820. And then at that point, I'm going to add these two numbers up right there. Those are representing my expenses. So I had 15470 in expenses, and then I added a 3105 income tax expense. So my total income tax or my total expenses at that point are 18575 If I take my total revenue and then subtract out my total expenses, I'll get my net income. My net income is going to be $72.45. And then once again, I'm just going to kind of make a total to balance out my columns right there. So at this point in time, we're kind of done with the adjustment part. We've done the adjustment column. We've done the income statement column. We've calculated net income and the applicable tax on that net income. So I'm kind of done with the instructions right there. I'm going to kind of put that behind my Excel worksheet so we can see what we're doing. Yeah, just like that. Now I've revealed to you the retained earnings columns and the balance sheet columns. So at this point, all we're really doing, just like we did on the income statement, we're going to take the trial balance, factor in any adjustments that we need to, to come up with the numbers that go on to these columns. We'll kind of start and think about what's on that retained earnings statement. Well, retained earnings, dividends, net income, that's about all that's going to be on it. So we'll start right there. Retained earnings, 6120. Carry them right over. Dividends, 600. We'll carry that right over. And we'll kind of come down here to the bottom. You'll recall we had $7,245 in net income. I'm going to carry that right over. You see how everything's nice and neat, lined up right there. On the debit side, we'll simply just carry down our 600. We're going to add the beginning retained earnings to the net income. Just like that. Okay, and you can tell, well, we need another number to plug in here because we're not really uh, in balance at that point, are we? So where is that number going to come from? Hey, look at our little screen tip right there. Anytime in Excel you see a little red flag in the corner, that, that's a comment that you can look at. So it says beginning retained earnings plus any increases minus any decreases equals ending retained earnings. Beginning 6120 plus increases, which was net income minus decreases, gives me that number. So I'm just going to kind of take the sum of the beginning and my increases, subtract out the decreases, and I get 12,765. And again, the bottom, we'll just kind of flip the two columns here. Just like that. 
So finally, let's move over to the balance sheet. The balance sheet, again, assets equal liability plus his owner's equity. And it's just a, a statement that kind of visually represents the accounting equation. So we're going to carry all of the assets, all the liabilities, and all the equity accounts right over here. 1000 my cash account, and carry that over. 2700 in AR. No adjustments being done there. We had 30 plus a $70 adjustment in the allowance for doubtful accounts account. And then just kind of continuing down the line, 1,200, 9,200, 4,500, 20,600 uh, 20, for buildings and equipment. And again, I know I mentioned it before, but it bears worth repeating. Uh, I would probably in real life have formulas in my columns here for the financial statement columns that, that would kind of Take the trial balance number and then factor in the adjustments that are being made. Um, so but again, this is just kind of a little worksheet the book put together for you. So we'll just work with what we've got here. And that really all we can do in life is just work with what we got. Sometimes you got to be flexible, right? So there we go. We've knocked out all of that. I mean, jump down here. 250, 80. We made an adjustment to salaries payable and utilities payable. We made an adjustment to interest payable. We made an adjustment to rent receivable and interest receivable. And then way down here, we had income taxes payable, 3,105. And then finally, we had that retained earnings number that we calculated, 12,765. So again, we'll just kind of add up our columns and make sure that everything balances out here. Thirty-nine through thirty. Yeah. Uh -oh. You see, I notice I'm a little bit off there. Those two columns out of balance out. So what are we going to do? Well, first thing I want to do, I, I'm guessing I probably forgot a number. I'm just going to double click on that to show my calculation. And yep, sure enough, look there. I haven't included that $250. That's my difference right there. So I'm just going to kind of come here and tweak my form a little bit. Add him in there. And there you have it. That's my worksheet. Now, the job isn't done right there. The worksheet, remember, the sole purpose of that is to help us make our financial statements by and minimize the errors that happen, minimize the time that it takes to do that. So once I've got my worksheet, really the job has just begun because now I've got to make my income statement, my statement of retained earnings and the balance sheet. And you look at all that and say, oh my gosh, how am I going to make that? Well, it, it, it's terribly simple at this point because all we're doing is plugging in the numbers. I've already made everything I need to do those statements. I already got the numbers right here. So from this point, all you would do is just use the numbers to complete your statements. And just kind of give you an idea. And you can see sales revenue. Cost of goods sold, we just pull them straight from the income statement, okay? So I'm gonna stop right there, otherwise we'll have a, a 30 minute video and it'll be way too long. But if you're working on a problem like this and you, you get the worksheet done, you can't figure out the income statement, how to fill out the statements, I'd be happy to help, uh, or the adjusting entries themselves and the journal entries uh, for the closing entries. Um, you know, I, I would just kind of tackle the worksheet and focusing on that part there. So hopefully you have a, a good idea of how a worksheet comes together and why it would be useful to put together those financial statements. If you have any questions, bring them to class, email me and be happy to help. We'll see you next time.